Hey, good morning guys and welcome back to Max Talk. So the previous talk that I did, uh, I talked about gear and not really specific items of gear, but in terms of how to set up your uh, loadout, your kit. And what came from that was some questions about helmets because I didn't cover helmets. So I'm gonna hit some uh, topics about helmets today. So we can really divide this up into a couple of different areas. So there's the general idea of whether or not you would want to wear a helmet. And then there's a second point specifically to nighttime and night vision equipment. So I'm gonna to touch on both of those subjects today. So in general, whether should you or should you not wear a helmet in tactical operations? So I did cover the fact that it's highly desirable if you're gonna be involved in kinetic operations, there's a chance of it, that if you um, have the ability to wear a decent weight um, ballistic plate, then you should probably do so. As long as, as per the things I talked about in, in the previous talk, that does not, the wearing of that does not mean that you, you're gonna become a, a no-go on tactical operations due to perhaps, um, you know, heat, uh, terrain, uh, duration, all those kinds of things. So if you can wear it realistically, then you should. So, forgetting night time for a minute, should you or should you not wear a helmet? Now, what's interesting about helmets is that helmets, although they're, you know, a hard ballistic helmet, it is not rated the same way that a ballistic plate is rated. So helmets are usually rated to 3A, which means they stop pistol rounds and they don't stop rifle rounds, which in itself is an interesting point. So because of that, you can really think about wearing a, a bump helmet, which is like a kind of a skateboard or ski helmet, which is just there as a hard shell to give protection to your, to your dome. Um, and then you can wear a ballistic helmet, which is gonna provide ballistic protection. I don't have a bump helmet to show you today. I'm of the thought that if I'm gonna wear a helmet, then I want it to be a ballistic helmet. Now the whole aspect of, of helmets not stopping uh, rifle rounds is interesting in itself, because there's a lot of, sort of anecdotal evidence about how rifle rounds have been stopped by helmets. And of course, it's not only rifle rounds that you've got to worry about, because the helmet itself is gonna protect, protect you from you know, bumps, things flying through the air, which might not actually be rifle rounds, perhaps ricochets, um, shrapnel, if you're in that kind of environment, um, falling objects, being hit on the head, etc. So generally, you know, if you're gonna be, the same way that you might wear a, uh, a hard hat in a construction zone, wearing a helmet in a combat zone is generally a good idea. Um, a lot of guys, however, don't. They don't wear helmets. And um, usually that's just a comfort thing. Uh, you'll see guys wearing ball caps, etc. Or, you know, jungle operations, maybe you're not wearing ballistic plates and you're just wearing a, a, a boonie hat. Uh, so therefore you, you're, 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 you're basing your risk on the environment you're in. Jungle operation may be a long time out in the jungle with, with a sort of a small amount of actual kinetic action within that time for which you may actually carry a helmet and body armor to wear specifically for that, um, versus something like close quarter battle operations where you're in structures and there's a lot more of that kind of danger of impact to your head. Um, it's a personal risk assessment. So on the, you know, do helmets stop rifle rounds thing, I know two people personally, one guy who got hit um, in a helmet just like this above the ear and whether that was a, a ricochet or, or, or a direct hit I don't know but it stopped it and he suffered a traumatic brain injury for which, from which he recovered. Uh, I know another guy who, who never wore a helmet and he got his hair parted at one point by a rifle round and he had his ear partially severed by another rifle round. Uh, so that's close stuff make your own decisions. For example, as a contractor, for example, in Iraq, we would generally not wear, we would wear ballistic plates, we would generally not wear helmets. However, 
if we were traveling in, in um, high profile armored SUVs, then we would probably wear a bump helmet. And the reason for the bump helmet was in case of, a, of an IED, which can perhaps result in a rollover crash, etc., then hitting your head against that hard armored glass is not a good plan. So it was just to protect you f from that kind of uh, concussion and perhaps uh, road traffic accident, that kind of thing that could be caused like that. If you were gonna be top cover up out of an armored vehicle manning a gun, then you would probably wear, well you would wear a, um, a ballistic helmet. And not to forget, it's not really part of the talk today, but you're probably gonna wear iPro. I'll never forget the picture. And when I saw this picture in Iraq, from that time on, I always wore iPro. It was a guy who was wearing uh, like Wiley X uh, uh, iPro, and he was a US soldier, and he'd been hit by um, basically a bunch of frag from an ID, like dust blown crap from an ID. And he, the picture was of him taking his sunglasses off, and his whole face was peppered in little tiny um, kind of marks where he'd been hit and his eyes were completely protected and from that moment on I always wore iPro. So iPro is another thing that if you're going to be wearing a ballistic helmet you should be wearing iPro especially in a CQB environment. Um, if there's going to be stuff flying around wear iPro. Rounds can hit, dust can fly etc. Um, the other thing is so I mentioned jungle operations or sort of woodland operations that's interesting in itself because moving at night, you don't want a stick in the eye. Back in the day, we never wore, wore eye pro. Lots of people got sticks in the eye. So you can wear clear eye, eye pro at night while you're moving with your uh, night vision equipment. That kind of gets into the whole, well, you know, you can see the glint of sunglasses, or not sunglasses, but clear eye pro. I mean, sunglasses themselves are never, never good, so never good camouflage item. But uh, clear eye pro, yeah, maybe you can see the glint, that kind of thing. Well, let's just assess you know, how close we are to the enemy, whether he's going to see the glint on a close target reconnaissance, well, maybe then we're not going to wear, you know, clear eye pro for that. So it's all, you know, sensible decisions that you've got to make. So, um, this here is a, it's actually a Team Wendy kind of gunfighter type helmet, um, comes with the shroud for night vision equipment on it. And so these are kind of the modern cool guy helmet. And um, they kind of come in for criticism because they're cut out above the ears. So it kind of comes from the old, uh, you know, vehicle crew operator helmets, which are cut out above the ears. And the reason they're cut out above the ears is to fit comm equipment. So here's, you know, comm equipment here, which you'd have to take this off, and then you'd have to um, ensure that your um, you wrap, you have a space to route your uh, electron. If you're going to wear electronic um, ear protection underneath. And one of the reasons to wear electronic ear protection underneath your helmet is to put your comms into it. So you've got radio into this. And also, if you're going to be a kinetic environment, obviously it's giving you ear protection, but it's actually helping your situational awareness because it's going to cut out those, those, those gunshot sounds and allow you to hear better in general. So wearing electronic ear pro, although that's got a, um, a cost in terms of the carriage of batteries, that is going to enhance your situational awareness in a gunfight. So not only can you hear your comms better, but it's cutting out a lot of the sounds and you're going to have better situational awareness both on the radio and by voice. So that's something to think about. Um, so this is a hard ballistic helmet. Obviously they're only, they're only rated up to level 3A. Now this here is a issue ACH. Um, same deal, obviously it's got the, um, the ear coverage and some people will be like, well, you know, if I'm wearing this, I'm going to get shot in the ear. Well, yeah, but the thing is you won't look as cool because you're going to look way cooler in this than you are in this. Okay, so that's obviously a prime factor. Um, but the thing is, hey, it's always a, if you get shot in the face, the, none of these helmets are going to do anything for you. You get shot in the neck. so. And also what I've seen is, um, although it's kind of hard to, to, to visualize that, is I've seen these manufacturers claim that they actually have, I think because they go further down the back of the neck here, that they actually have the same amount of head coverage 
on these uh, gunfire type helmets as they do on the ACH type cut helmet. So that's interesting. You can probably get these helmets cheaper. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them, but they're not going to fit so well if you're wearing comm equipment underneath, which is the whole point of this type of helmet. All right, so. That's a few points on do I or do I not wear a helmet during the day? If you're going to wear a helmet at night, well, the prime reason for wearing a helmet at night is all the reasons that I gave you during the day, but it's for the use of night vision equipment. So you can go a couple of ways with that. A, a, what you can do, for example, is if you don't want to wear a helmet at all, you can get something like this, which is the Cry nightcap. All right? So this is a soft thing that goes on your head. And so, you know, you want to be sneaky beaky, etc. And also, this is great for folding up in your kit. So you're moving around during the day and you fold this up. It means you don't have to carry a helmet when it comes nighttime and you want to break out the nods. So that's definitely something to consider. Um, like all these things, and you can put a counterweight on the back, etc. Like all these things, a soft, a soft uh, cap like this is not going to mount the nods as well as a hard cap. So what you can then consider is that, do I go for carrying a lighter um, bump helmet or do I want to carry a ballistic helmet? And again, that's up to you. Um, so if I, if I, this is actually an ops core helmet. So one of the things you can do uh, for night vision stuff is uh, you can mount your nods obviously nicely onto a, this is a ballistic helmet. This could either be a bump or a ballistic helmet. So this is going to provide me that 3A protection. It's obviously going to provide me more protection from, you know, other than just getting bumped, uh, but stuff like falling or whatever, someone hit me over the head with it, whatever. This is going to provide me better general protection. What you can do is, as I mentioned before, is if you don't mount the, uh, you can actually route your, take the camouflage cover off and route the, these underneath, which is never as, uh, as, um, as comfortable, uh, but it's more flexible. Or what you can do is you can mount your uh, electronic ear pro onto the, onto the helmet like this, okay? And that's quite flexible. They pop in, okay, and then they pop out and then you can move them up like I had. You can move them up out of the way. You can put a, a counterweight on the back um, and then you've got, um, obviously I've got the, the night vision here. It's, it's, uh, the, the, the PVS-14 is bungeed to the, to, the, um, to the helmet in case it falls off. And then I've got my, my cables for my uh, electronic ear pro. So if you've got this, it's gonna be slightly heavier to wear on your head, but it gives you ballistic protection. It gives you a really solid um, mount for your night vision equipment and it gives you good options for mounting your electronic ear pro which again is your comms which again is your situational awareness alternative to this as i stated would be to go for a bump version of the helmet and or no helmet at all and go for something like a a, a, a cry a cry nightcap so it was a general summary there there's the general protective idea of wearing a helmet. Nobody really wants to do it. You know, it's hot, whatever, that kind of thing during the day. Then when the gunfire starts, probably wish you're wearing a helmet. You've got options. You can go for the bump style helmet or you can go for a ballistic helmet. My personal choice is if I'm going to carry a helmet, I want it to be a ballistic helmet. Yes, it's not going to theoretically stop rifle rounds. Um, but it's going to stop things flying through the air which are going to easily damage your very vulnerable head dome. Okay, so you know you're in a you're in a potentially dangerous environment, especially if you're um, if you're operating in structures for kind of CQB urban stuff where there can be stuff falling, etc., banging your head, just generally banging your head. You know, eye pro on uh, ballistic helmet, definitely. Rounds do funny things. So 
uh, you've, you've heard about, so around, if it, if it hits a wall, it's going to basically ricochet along parallel to the wall. So rounds do strange things. It, what they'll do sometimes is if they go into your body, then they can actually ricochet on a bone and follow a bone, and they'll sort of bounce around inside somewhat. This is things that rounds can do. They also tend to follow, hey, I'm not a ballistic expert here, but they'll tend to follow a curve. So what you sometimes get is, is that you, someone might actually get hit with a round, but then rather than penetrating straight in, then what it'll do, sometimes it'll, it'll follow the curve of the helmet and exit on the other side. There's all sorts of weird science involved in this. And this is just anecdotal evidence that I'm giving you here, guys. You know, I'm not the expert on that, on that aspect, okay? But it's always a good idea to wear a ballistic helmet in that kind of environment. If you get to uh, then moving into night operations, then you, uh, the helmet is a better option for mounting your night vision equipment to. You can also mount other stuff to it, like IR beacons, etc. Um, and sometimes it gets a little ridiculous because people's helmets are like kind of, uh, you know, Christmas trees. Uh, and then you've got to think about what kind of environment you're operating in. One other aspect of that is that is that helmets are not good camouflage items. So this, this is all very like special operations. Um, it's that cool guy special operations thing where you don't want to wear a helmet cover. Uh, this shape, shine, shadow, silhouette, etc. This is very easy. So if you're running CQB operations or whatever, direct action, then nobody cares. But this, out in the woods or the, or the countryside, this is a very obvious shape. So, you know, what you can do is you can put a, a helmet cover on it. And then what you can also do is you can scrim it up. So you can get, uh, you know, bits of camouflage or whatever and scrim it up a little bit like a miniature ghillie suit and then you've got to make sure that that doesn't cover up whatever Christmas tree items you've got on that helmet so there's a balance between cool guy hey I've got all this stuff on my helmet and then there's like hey I don't want to be seen uh, so I need to sort of camouflage th th this helmet up um, I think it's a, a pretty good summary there guys if, if you've got questions then let me know uh, I know that most people you know they don't want to uh, move around all the time in helmets. If you're not wearing a helmet, so you know, you might have your ball cap. Ball caps, again, are not things that are, you know, they're not very well, they're very easy to see, a ball cap. You're probably better off with a boonie cap. But you might want to, you know, you, maybe you're moving around most of the time, you've got a, a boonie cap on or a ball cap, then where's your helmet going to be? And that's something to consider when we talk about, about gear carriage, which was on the previous uh, talk that I did. Where's your helmet going to be? Especially if during the day, before you're not wearing it at nighttime specifically for your, your, your night vision equipment, where's your helmet going to be? So you have to think about how you're going to attach that to your backpack. And you can get various <coughs> beaver tails, they call it, various kind of things that will allow that helmet to be strapped or attached easily to the, to the small pack that you're carrying. So you're not adding a great deal of weight, but you've got that thing with you Assuming you're on some kind of patrol, maybe you're out during the day and it's going into nighttime. Come nighttime, you're going to want to break out your night vision equipment, put it on. If you're still on patrol, come the dawn, you're going to want to have a security halt. You're going to want to break down your night vision equipment, whether or not you keep that helmet on during, during daylight hours. Okay, guys, thanks very much.